Lindsay, town, any activity updates? Yeah. Stuff. Um, so we have Heather Cross, who's our deputy town clerk. She has just a couple things she wants to go over with you guys regarding facility rentals. So if you guys don't know the town clerk's office, they are the ones that typically take the reservations and do the bookings and answer all the questions when people call. Um, so there's been a couple of things that have been identified. So I thought it was great to bring her here just to get the committee's input or for, for everything, cabins, yep. everything. Okay. Sorry. Everything. Okay. Yes. Um so if you want to go ahead, Heather. That'd okay. Be great. Hey everyone. Um uh so I don't know if any of you have heard that um we are moving into a new parks program. Astra is being taken over by Firefly. So our reservation program is going to be uh changing soon. And with that, there's a lot of prep going on in our office to get ready for that. Um, the in-office go live date is November 30th. Um, we'll kind of get a, few, a week or so under our belt before we post the online booking option, but there will be, you know, it'll be similar. Um, I, we're hearing great things, lots of improvements with that. But with that comes some things to think about as far as rates. Um, Jean and I were looking at the fee schedule back to 2017 today and um, maybe even further. That's just as far as we looked. The rates for the facilities ha hasn't changed at all. Um, since, so since at least 2017? Yeah. Um, so we're thinking um, because with this new program, um, the cost is three dollars and fifty cents uh, per reservation that we were going to put back as a reservation fee. So it's an additional fee on top of the uh, credit card processing fee. Um, right now, when they book online, they pay a five dollar booking fee. So now it'll just be any any reservation would pay that three dollars and fifty cents. So uh, with that being said, seeing all those fees sometimes times can be a little daunting when people are booking. So we thought the uh, possibility of raising the rates uh, might, you know, um, incorporate that fee right into the facility rental. Um, and also if, you know, with a little extra can help to uh, support fund the parks and all the things that are going on at the park. Um, with the upkeep. So what we were possibly, you know, one idea that Jean and I discussed today was cabins, lodges, and halls being like uh, raising the rate $25 and then uh, pavilions $10. Obviously we're just looking for input and suggestions, your help to pitch that to the town board, whatever you feel. What would that be as a percentage? Do you know? Like $25 as, on a cabin rental would be such as what? Well, that's the funny thing with our fee schedule. There, the fees are are <laughs> all, all the over the place. Um, I did print out. Actually, if you want to go ahead, we'll pass this around so you can actually see what the current rates are. As far as the fees, each different facility has a different cost. Uh, the cabins, there's a daily rate, there's a weekly rate, seasonal rate, seasonal rates. The, <laughs> they're kind of all over the place. So just kind of taking them as a whole and 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 raising them that twenty five dollars. Um, so there's also non-resident and resident rates. Um, right now, that that's another thing that we were looking at making changes to. Right now, the difference between the non-resident and resident rate, it's just a an amount. It's not a it's consistent, not a consistent amount at all. So the issue is, so the clerk's office will get calls and someone will ask, well, what's, you know, what's the percentage difference for like the resident versus non-resident rate? And we can't even answer that because there's a different. <laughs> it's just an amount. Here. It's just like someone picked like, oh, this sounds like a good difference. Uh, they're really just like the cabins um, daily rate for the lakeside is $100 for a non-resident. As you can see, $70 for a uh, resident that's a $30 difference there's ones that are $40 65 the you know difference is all over the place so with that with the one reason why we're thinking that it would be a lot easier to have it be a percentage off of each one is because it um it, it would create consistency it, and it also gets a little difficult with us inputting those rates into our system um, I know that I did not set up Astra, which is what we're using currently, but that was a huge struggle. And um, although this program is, sounds like it's going to run a little bit more smoothly, 
it would just make that easier too. And just for us to be able to tell the residents, all resident rates, 25% discount, no matter what facility. How do they choose the rate? How do you know they're a town resident? They... The, right now there's a coupon code and we're, we're going to be able to do the same thing. So what they do right now is if they call in the office, we, pl we plug it in. Oh. Coupon code automatically takes the discount off. So of the coupon code changes monthly just so that way someone doesn't yeah, yeah. use yes. that. And then they're different each year. Um, just set the non-resident rates and then just have a 15% discount for town residents. Yeah, that's board. that's what we're hoping we can do. Uh, I mean, I threw 25% discount. Doesn't yeah. necessarily mean that's what it's got to be. Um, that was just a you know an idea. Um, Mark, you do a camping. Yeah, I, these again, rates I would like to look for these. Yeah, they, they look really low to me. They are really yeah. low. Yeah, a weekly rate of two hundred dollars. Yeah, or three hundred sixty dollars. I mean, that that's that's. And just that's today, I um, I mean, I, I know our cabins right now are a little different than other places. Some other places that have the more updated ones, but we are getting updated cabins. And just today, looking at um, Samson and Seneca Lake State, or not the state park, but the Seneca Lake Resort. Mm -hmm very very similar cabins to our new ones that are coming and they were um three hundred dollars a night or, night or a, a night a night we're getting that a week it's a point yeah I and i mean right now our cabins are not comparable to that yeah, because yeah. they're yeah. rustic yeah. but they you know i still think that's pretty low three hundred dollars a night no and i'm not even saying that it would have to be I that even just, say that for a hotel just giving a comparison a to a local campground that has yeah. very similar camp camp cabins well i guess i mean i think code showed everybody out into the wilderness <laughs> and people are using these facilities and I, those look extremely low to me that's just me i think those are low they are, and especially since there hasn't been an increase that we have seen in many, many years. Yeah. I do think it's, t I don't think we should jump too far, but Heather brought right. my attention too. You know, when we do get the new cabins, we also don't want it to be a shock to people when we do start charging the appropriate price for those yeah. types of cabins. Um, I do think, you know, we, do, we need to consider also like our, the resident rate and what that percentage looks like. Our residents do fund. Mm -hmm you know, the parks with their taxes, you know, I want that to be a consideration, especially this year with the reval yes. and taxes going up. Yes. I would hate to upset our residents who use our facilities. They're already upset. Correct. Um, and these are wonderful amenities that the taxpayers. Do we have fund. an idea of, of the number of residents versus non-residents who rent out the cabins? I don't know that, uh, like, specifically. Um, Are we able to get that information? That'd be interesting. Yeah, I, I'm that. sure there's got to be a way that I can try to pull that info or, or get you a, a rough number. Yeah. Um, I mean, just thinking about the day-to-day -day that I, I almost feel like. Most are residents. Yeah, it's, it's probably are, pretty equal, yeah. honestly. For the... For the individual cabins in Ananda, you think those are mostly residents or cabins? I don't. No, no. Yeah. Sorry, I'm talking the other facility. Yeah, facilities. like pavilions yeah. and the other yeah. facilities. But as far as cabins, yeah, I mean there's a few that I know we've seen yeah reservation. We get a lot of repeat. Yeah, people that have a lot of um, but a lot of them are relatives of residents. Yeah. Right. So yes, you know, family residents are involved one way or another with them, and mm -hmm. um, we like have some time to kind of digest it and think about it. Yeah, as far as these rate rate increases, we were more thinking um, this would be something that would be good for the January fee schedule changes. So nothing that we're trying to jump right into right now um, to start with this new program because it's going to start next month. Um, we're just at that $3.50 fee is going to be a reservation fee that they're going to see. But, you know, sometimes you, you like to know right up front what you're paying for and not does, get hit with these fees at that. The, the company get that three fifty dollars for every reservation? Yes. Okay, so that's... So it covers the cost yeah. that we wouldn't yeah. otherwise have. Which when we were so. talking about this just collectively between Heather and Jean and myself, as we were transitioning through 
that three dollars and fifty cents is not something we want again our taxpayers to pay. So I do think it's smart to wrap it into oh absolutely right the yeah. cost of the facility rental right um. Right. If you guys buy tickets from like Ticketmaster and stuff yeah. years ago, yeah. they used to smack you with all the fees. Yeah. Like yeah. it was very misleading. Yeah. Yeah. Um, now they say in there in some parentheses that says like all the fees are included in this price. So I think that's something that Firefly can do. Um, so that way you're not. Oh, yeah, I thought it was this price, mm -hmm. but now when I'm checking out, there's right. additional money. Right. Now three dollars and fifty cents is nothing. <laughs> you know, is there a <laughs> revenue target for the budget that we're trying to hit? Like, is there a, nothing has been a, nothing has been established. I yes, yeah. there should be. Um, at this point, we'll never offset operating costs. No, but, um, yeah. but we need to. I think going forward, we need to start having that mentality because right. things aren't free anymore. I mean, you know? I'm sure, our operating costs have gone way up. They have because supply yeah. costs. I mean, labor costs, employee costs. I mean, yeah. everything. So, so do you look at it different? Do you say these are the rates and then you have a 25% increase in the rate for a non-resident? Is that easier to just set a rate rather than look at it the opposite way of, of here's the non-resident rate and residents save a certain percentage? Well, it's what it's, I think that's... I mean, it's, it's, I mean, I mean I just wondered, like, where are the rates? Technologically, it discounts nicer. Yeah. Yes, like yeah. As a resident, you'd love well, to see... I get a discount. Okay. Yeah. I also agree because sometimes people don't always read everything and they're going to be like, wait, it said this. And and then when we realize they're not a resident. I think the more expensive rate should be. Because that happens already yeah. as far as like anyone okay. who has so a candidate will address. Get an X percent discount. Discount. So. And we just want to know what you think would be a fair discount for the right. residents is really what I'm looking for from the committees. What mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. <laughs> that would make some hit. Yeah. Make everyone happy. Pretty book solid. <laughs> I think you need to look at these um separately. The the certainly the the lakefront cottages that you can rent for the week, that would be one. But the pavilions, I think, and the halls, I think you have to look at separately. And um And take into account that those are typically town residents that are running those. A lot of organizations too, right? And, and nonprofit organizations. And, and organizations. they, I mean, even if so, any organization, any program like that, mm -hmm. it, they don't get the resident rate. That's in the in the in the fee schedule. They get what? They, they don't get the resident rate, even if it's somebody that is a resident. If it's for an organization, a group, or a business, you don't discount it at all. They don't discount. ARC, oh my God, both ARC goes both Victor yeah. and Farmington discount it yeah. to organizations, especially yeah. community service organizations. But that's something I believe that the town board had set, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's in, it's in the, that way. The way that it's currently. That's how it's stated in the in the fee schedule. Hmm. Minus schools, schools, schools my yeah, Puerto New York Rico City could get a pavilion yeah. at either a, a, a Farmington Park or a Victor Park. Any of the parks, of course, we built one of the parks, but um, we don't pay anything. Oh, we pay a deposit and it's refunded. Well, I, I mean, do this, the Kiwanas and the Lions and I think the what vets, the as far as the rate, uh, the resident rate not being offered to businesses is that sometimes businesses that are not located in the town, but the oh no, resident, I think businesses should pay. I right. don't believe service organizations should, we should be asking them to pay or not discounting them. I can advocate for discounting them. But I, you know. I, I won't advocate for giving it to them for nothing. Let them pay in yeah. this town. I don't care if you've got lots of money. We, <laughs> so we, we need to come up with a fee. What I'm hearing is we need to come up with a fee second. Or a set amount. That's what you're looking at. The, right. the quickest thing you would like is what do we think a percentage would be? Yeah. Is that yeah. the first number? Yeah. And then yeah. you guys can do this. To change the, so you can set your change the resident rate to uh, a percentage rather than just random amounts. 
Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, what kind of ideas about raising the rates, how much, you know, will it look different for different types of facilities? Um, I mean, there were a couple other things that we also had in mind uh, as far as like Westlake Road Schoolhouse right now, there's a weekday and a weekend rate you know, maybe just making that all one rate all across the board. There's just so many different things that- Is 10% discount too small? I think it's too small. In my opinion. Somebody was saying it's like 25. Yeah, so it's like 25. Yeah, it's like yeah that, looking at these, I mean, it, I mean, they, they are all over the board, all but <laughs> 25 seems to be, I, I mean, really our big cool. rentals are the lakeside cabins. Mm -hmm. Um, where's outhouse? What's what's the different? Was it forty bucks? Outhouse thirty dollar difference. Um, oh, outhouse park hall is difference. yeah fifty dollars. Um, I mean, here's the thing: we can do it for a year, and then next and then year do we, it again. That's we, yeah. we just shuffle that if we find that that. I mean, once once we look at a new fee, maybe new fees for all of these, but I mean, something to get us off the ground. Twenty five seems like it's. An easy number and 25 is high. Twenty-five percent is high. And it's a it's a, a year where the, the taxes are going up, school taxes went up, the, all the all the other taxes are going up. You, you think prices are going up much. recreation yeah. needs to be stabilized and people need recreation in their I, I really need recreation so right now. It needs to be stabilized and affordable for our residents. So, so what would the discount be to you? What, what is you know, what percentage? Yeah, they were talking about discount, not rate the rate raise. Okay, so I would, rec I would recommend we not raise rates at all. Just keep them the way they are now or raise them. 10% would take care of the 350 charge. And include that in the residents in are still the, paying for, for the residents paying the the charge. The but what do you think the, the percentage the discount thing? should yeah. be for resident versus non-resident? So, yeah, so do I. You know what percentage discount do you think for the people that use our residents? I mean, we look at our lakeside cabins for a hundred bucks for a non-resident, and it's seventy bucks for. So I mean, we. So with twenty five percent discount, I did like the daily rate for. A lakeside cabin at a hundred dollars um for non-resident 70 right now it's 70 dollars for so if you did a 25 percent discount off of that hundred dollars it's 75 so, it so it's five dollars yeah you know so 25 percent gets with the rates just as they are gets pretty close to, about to what it what is, right. some yeah. of them are i mean right. they're all over yeah. the place so yeah. As far as as far as raising the rates though, I, I still I agree with Dan. I, I would like to see the people who are using them. I mean, we're funding that and our taxes are funding. Right. So we're worried about our taxes going up, our taxes are gonna keep going up. If we don't start bringing some money in for our facilities. Exactly. So I think we should raise our rates because if people want to use them, then they'll pay that money. Is that too high to raise it? I don't think so. <clears throat> well, I think without maybe doing some comparison and looking up some other, should we should we, we look at what we're looking at? Yeah, and talk about it and in depth yeah, I think the twenty five percent is tonight's discussion, and then the another discussion of what we want to look at after. I mean, I'd like to sit down and look at Farmington and Victor and their the twenty five percent discount you're talking about I, for tonight. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, say let's let's stabilize it at twenty five percent, and okay. I mean, we could then go back and adjust. Yeah, you know, I, some of these to so but right now when they make a reservation they're paying how much seven what'd you say 750 a fee uh to make a reservation online dollar booking fee well plus. that's only if they book online right now there's no I and mean, there's only credit card processing fees oh okay i got you it's just like what close to yeah the so what with this new program the way it is the way that they charge that three dollars and fifty cents um it's going to have to be credit card only um, just because there's no way to delay payment on the, so they're going to see that $3 and 50 cents. They're going to see the credit card processing fees all, okay. you know, so if incorporating that, I'm just saying like being able to incorporate that into the yes. actual rental fee is, it's going to just look smoother yep. than yep. having all these fees that are tacked on afterwards. 
And, you know, um, I mean, the other thing uh, that Lindsay and I had talked about kind of unrelated, but related at the same time is that we have, we also have the fields that people use and there's no charge for those. Um, so we talked about the possibility of adding that as a fee. Um, I did uh, get, I didn't make copies for everyone, but I did look up a couple other parks in the area that outhouse and Pierce Park specifically. Right, the fields, like yeah. the soccer fields. Soccer the, field. yeah. And um, just if you guys want to pass this around and look, there's different rates for field charges that we could add as. Do we charge these now? No. So currently we charge nothing. And nothing. the reason Heather and I started to talk about it is because we don't have a very good system a, a really good reservation system for the field. Right. Now, typically Castle, you know, they, they talk to us ahead of time, but there's nothing official. I know other places charge for fields. I'm not... Pay anything for no. Mm -mm. And the reason I think we should is because, again, our team prioritizes cutting the grass of those areas mm -hmm. because we know that it's used for recreation for soccer. So we maintain those parks a little bit more than others. Um there's maintenance costs that go along with that. I mean, my team has to clean up a lot more, you know, debris and trash that people just After the game, around. The um, so I do think we should be charging something. Again, just to try to start offsetting some of these operating costs. Now, I don't want us to discourage people from recreation. That's not the goal. So um, Heather, thank you for finding some other- right. And you I know mean, what I think? I think it's time to have the um, town board take a look at the recreation fee they collect from uh, a new, a new, new development. developments. And in, in my opinion, that would be the first place we would raise more money for parks, not on the town residents. And no, I'm not running for office. Well, we're not charging anything Nothing. for our fields. Mm -mm. And one of those organizations is charging $35 an hour. An hour. Who does? Bigger. Oh, I was wondering about that. Yeah. yeah. So, mm -hmm. And their they, fields are booked. How many, yeah. Yes. How many hours a week? So, but we would also then need to identify the fee, what are the fields yeah. and have a reservation policy. I, I mean, if a family shows up at a park and it's not reserved, they can go play soccer and- Of course. Right. But if it's booked, just like a pavilion, if it's reserved- But if you're planning, on, if Castle's planning on playing four games there three nights a week, that's- that's a lot. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was running the lacrosse organization, we were that was a lot of years ago. We had to pay the school. By the time we were done, we had to pay the school. Do the schools charge for the use of, for other organizations to use their fields? No, they, they don't. They no, did. They haven't ever since I've there's been no charge to the school. The city no. fields we've had to pay for, mm -hmm. but. Oh, never paid good. for the school fees. And I know the city is looking at upping their fee fees for yeah. um the field rentals right now. <clears throat> so I think right now they charge 25. The city this so the city charges. They do charge. Yep. Yeah, I think that was one of that was one of the ones I printed out. Was it $25 for what? Like a week or was it a day? I think that was no Victor was the one was our it was per day. Okay. Per field. Mm -hmm. The one of those was per day, one of those was per week, and one of those was per hour. <laughs> it's just something to consider as we're looking at how we can, again... Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think operating we costs. can add that to our, as we look for adding it to the... These stuff will play yeah. out here. Do you have an extra copy of these, or...? You can keep them. Okay. I just printed them off just to have something to look at when you, to give you guys yeah. to look at as far as that is that goes. So what I'm hearing there is support. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think the big thing in this new program is, is I, I guess we would have to identify what would be the fields, mm -hmm. Pierce Park, soccer, outhouse, really only kind of has- Soccer, one and a half, yeah. It's really one. Or one athletic field. Yeah. Are they playing lacrosse anymore at outhouse? Well, they played there, did they, did they play? 
I have not seen any lacrosse at they had a use. They had a, for a little bit, they had a In 2021, I think was the last time that they had reserved the field. Um, okay. But unfortunately, with the springs that we have been having, yeah. where they play, it's, it's not yeah. playable. Yeah. Well, the Jul June and July that we've been having, it wasn't playable. So, yeah, yeah I, I definitely think that is, is definitely on our to do list to okay. come up with, with a good cost. Okay. And, oh. Let me just be clear because I don't. Yes. You're not asking us to set the rates. You're that's the for the professionals to do. are looking right. For we're looking for yes. We we're, just want su support from the committee right. to proceed with the, the potential for increasing the rates. Right. Right. Um, before obviously we make anything official, I would love to present to you guys what we come up with. Um, and obviously any input that you guys have too is I you know highly encouraged. Um, we also are looking though from this committee what percentage you feel should be the discounted rate for our town residents. Um, so if that's something you want to make a motion on, awesome. We can easily get that going um, to what resolution for November? Yeah, Okay. because then we could incorporate it right away in our new program. Yeah. You just brought up 25. I like it. And you've done... So math, I'm looking at these and I mean, in your opinion, was 25 kind of where your head was set at? Yeah, I mean, the, the few um, that I went through here, it was it was pretty comparable to yeah. uh, what it already is. A couple that I did, yeah. um, like I did uh, King Hall, um, just taking 200, 25% off of that 200, it was 150 right now res it's 130. I mean, it was a little bit more than what the resident is, you know, they would get a little bit less of a discount Yeah. with the 25% on some of them, but some like it's hard because they're really all over the right. place right Every now. So yeah, yes. here's the thing, what we can do because we do, the clerk's office has so much communication with the people that are booking they can start documenting if someone's like, oh, that's all we get for a resident rate and start accepting some of that, you know, just listening to that feedback. And if we get inundated with it, then maybe we reconsider what that looks like. I do think it's a great starting point. So we make motion that we um, go to 25% discount for residents on, on a publishing rate. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. And then that takes non-resident, it, it makes one column instead of yeah. 40 columns. Yep. Yeah. Makes it a little easier to look at, yeah. for sure. We I mean, I still like the off-season being a discount. And, and you know, we can just still keep that yeah. In, yeah. in line. And I think this is going to be a process, you know, as we get the new cabins in and as right. reasons change, that yeah. sort of thing. I mean, this isn't going to be the final conversation with right. it, but I do think we have a really good starting point. Um, yes, yeah, so I have to go through and input all of the rates in the new program that doesn't transfer over right. behind the scenes. So this will just make it easier just to be able to put that 25% off of all of them too. So um, just and just more clear to, you know, when the residents call and they're like, what's the discount? You know, 25%. So Does someone want a second? Second. Thank you. Everybody good with 24%? Yes, yes. Well, you just seconded it, so it's like... The hug goes. Now you're asking. Somebody wasn't up to Anything else on there? Um, Support shield reservations. Yep. Or us exploring. Yeah, as far as like the rate increases, we can just look for more talk yeah. about that um, for the January fee schedule changes. Um, and then I will definitely look to see if I can get some kind of number of residents versus non-resident bookings. Um, and uh, I think the only other thing that I brought up was the, the Westlake Road Schoolhouse weekday versus weekend, whether we just want to make that one Right. And I don't know if that's something that we could just, we would just incorporate again in that January fee. How often has that been during the week? That's it week. has been more frequently. Every Tuesday last year was rented by the Taekwondo place. Yeah. Is Outhouse Hall the same no matter whether it's weekend or weekday? Yes. And I think for all the updates Make that we've done to Schoolhouse, I do think the rate should be the same. Yeah. You're getting the same amenities, whether right. it's a weekend or a weekday. Yes. 
I would imagine the summer is probably rented pretty much yeah. it's around the clock. It has gained popularity mm -hmm. um, this year. You know, Prior to this year, I would tell you it's never rented. What's that? Uh, schoolhouse? Schoolhouse. Yeah. Word's out. It, word is out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it is cheap. There's and we've had a lot of we've had a lot of good feedback so about it. Always a lifeguard on duty. During um, between, well, I say between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Sometimes it's more like mid June to yeah, Labor Day. Day. Are you thinking like a seasonal or you? Well, because I think it's seasonal, very seasonal use. Mm -hmm. From what I've witnessed, I don't know. However, a lot of people have used it to wrap all their Christmas gifts. There's a, <laughs> you laugh. Well, there are quite cheese. a few people who you figured it out. Yes, they rent that <laughs> place. They the have are too cheap. <laughs> Yeah, they were wrapping bodies. It is. It, they are incredibly it's cheap a for a lake rat. for a lakefront and lake view so well. and it's property. Hard to find places to rent rooms, or whatever. It really is. I mean, even the library, it was impossible. For what the real estate is on Canandaigua Lake, and the fact that we charge what thirty five dollars for a rental. Yeah, it's, for that I facility mean, is insane to me. That's sixty for a non resident weekday uh, or weekend. 40 for a resident. How many hours can you be there for that money? It's nine to nine. You can't stay. <laughs> oh, no, no beds. You can sleep in your car. <laughs> no sleeping beds. <laughs> Could you do that yeah. if you want? <laughs> and, and generally the reaction when, when they find out the price, they're like, oh, what? wow, really? Oh, okay. So so, like it, it's it. we need to relook at that because it is a gorgeous facility with a gorgeous view even in winter yeah because it's heated it's air conditioned now i mean yes yeah it's the cat's pajamas yeah. Yeah. i try to get the senior group over there this summer <laughs> uh, the problem is it's location. Um, the location yeah. yes sorry i just love schoolhouse <laughs> <laughs> Is so there anything else that you need? I think that covers it. I appreciate you letting thank, me come thank, in and oh, take up the mayor's time you. tonight, listen in, and hopefully we'll be able to come up with some good rates and I'll get some info for you guys as well. Awesome. Thank, thank, you, you, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Firefly is going to be a more user friendly program too for the people that are booking. Um, we've done a lot of the demos and I am excited. We are yes. across the 21st century with this program. Well, were people frustrated with oh, the yes. other? Uh -huh. Oh, okay. I mean, internally yeah. and externally. That's what I'm... The one thing also about Astra is that um, there were a lot of things that we couldn't do in the office to fix things. We always had to call them and they oh. had to fix it. And it was very daunting. And and the online portion of it was confusing wow. too. A lot of people struggled with it. So this one seems like it's going to be a lot more consistent and uh, easy for us to make changes when we need to, and also for user friendly. So and this upgrade doesn't That's cost great. the town money. No, there's no additional cost at that three dollars and fifty cents per reservation. Wow. So it's not there's no cost for setup or it's it's a web based program. So. We just get a website, get a login, we're ready to go. Cool. Yeah. People will appreciate that. Yeah. 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 I think it's going to be Nothing good. worse than a good being change. frustrated trying. Yeah. Thanks, Heather. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Have a good evening. Bye. Lindsay, was there anything else you, any other updates or anything? No, I'll have a lot of okay. updates come our next day. And, and you did just, just while everybody's here, MRB, there has to be some utility work done, infrastructure work done at Onanda before there can be a phase plan presented. Well, so no work. Um, it's more of we have to figure out. The town board has to approve <laughs> MRB to do some infrastructure work before. Like uh, when I mean infrastructure work, infrastructure assessment, okay. um, which will cost some money. So that has to go through the approval process first before we can see or before we can get an accurate estimate of the phasing plan. Um, so I've been working with Jim Fletcher, Tom Fromberger, um, because they've done this before. So we don't, I don't have enough to do that right now. And then the National Fitness Campaign, Fitness Court, I was hoping to have more information for everyone today, but we had to push out our meeting to November um, just to get more information on that. It is not something that we would be able to do in 2024 anyway. It would be something that we would look towards 2025. Um, it would not be fully funded through this grant. It would be a match though, um, but it looks 
pretty stellar. I don't know if everyone got a chance to look at the presentation or not. There was one on TV, like one of the insurance companies on their commercial. I saw them. Yeah, it's pretty. People neat. using one. Yeah. I mean, whether it gets used or not, I, I don't know. Yeah. But I mean, good question. Maybe, like everyone had mentioned, Blue Heron might be a good location, but we also don't know exactly what that right. park's going right. to Well, maybe that so, starts the the vision yeah. of Blue Heron. So. so. And Halloween of Nanda. Um, <laughs> just a couple other quick things. Um, you had sent me from Oksana the Army event for May. Oh, yeah. You went on that? Yeah. So I'm... My kids in the army. I'm all for it. So am I. I so, think it's actually awesome. So this um person came in. Um, I don't I don't know his last name is Calhoun, and he's newer to the area. Wants to get involved volunteering and setting up just like you know a fun booth for the kids interaction. It's not like a recruitment thing. Um, but yes, he had reached out to Roxana about having an event in May at probably outhouse and i think it's a great idea we'll just get food trucks i mean very simple this does not have to be a complicated thing food trucks and the they email said their... that may is military appreciation month and they would and how amazing for us to do something like that right. and i don't i mean my son is obsessed with anything right. for me like he would think it's so cool so whether we do it at outhouse or even motion junction yeah i say yes <laughs> yeah i just wanted to bring it up it you know, as as more as we get closer, sure, I, I think that's something we could. We should also do um, an eclipse thing. So I believe special events is on that. Well, I didn't mention. I was afraid to mention anything else. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, special events does have plans cool. to do something. I believe down at Onanda for the eclipse. That's, Onanda's not a good place. They don't have enough sunlight there. Or outhouse should term. be outhouse. I think the location's not determined. Tell you so. tell her that. <laughs> And Dan, I, I went by too the other day, the volleyball court. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, could we like talk to the tree team about what would be the best to trim? That one tree just needs to be trimmed on that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, here park. Just trim it. Okay. And again, I, I think maybe that doesn't get used for volleyball because there's a tree growing over it. However, I did like the idea of putting a pickleball court in there, but I just yeah. <laughs> Pickleball's going through the roof. Well, right. I'll, I'll tell you that before you were on this board, we talked with the pickleball people. and Well, they kind of gathered around us. And um, there was a decision made to make that into two pickleball courts. Oh, by the Pierce? Yes. Not, not Pierce. Oh, we're talking about Pierce. Oh, we were talking about This was Onanda. Oh, that would have been a great idea. And nothing ever happened with it. Oh. It's lined for pickleball. It is lined now for pickleball. That works. Yeah, it, Pierce would be awesome. Pierce would be great too. But um, but we talked. We actually talked. The, the, a whole group of them. They have this whole conglomerate. They they came and they talked to us about pickleball, and we had to have pickleball. And um, but they wanted Onanda because I think this was close. But to it the is lake. marked, isn't it? It, it is marked. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We did have that relined this yeah. summer for for that. I mean, were we're you, talking about bringing recreation. I mean, in Cheshire would be amazing to have a court like that. And I do know it would get used. I hear about we need more pickleball courts all the time. All the time. Well, I, I drove by Sonnenberg on my way here. Yes. It crazy. It, it, you can't get out of them. No, you, you can't. No, you have out to. Out all ages. Wait. 12, 13 year olds to. You have to, get, you have to schedule a couple of weeks in advance for Sonnenberg. I was I was amazed. I've never played, so I was just like, oh. I I think anything we can do, even looking at other parks. I, I think as we look forward to Blue Heron Park. Yeah, I think um, closer to the town yeah. we get more action to pickleball. Yeah. where would you put it at Pierce in place of the volleyball? Those yeah. walnut trees are going to make a mess of whatever's on. Any, anything under you can't play volleyball. Not only is it the branch, it's your your it's the type um, of tree. Like right late in the year, you can't play on walnuts. Yeah, like yeah. all summer you're fine. Yeah, but. If it gets rented out to leaf peepers or anyone in the later season, I broke it's... ankles. Well, we're we're back. Back. I think that they would <laughs> yeah, know, right. yeah. play there, but you would need the to. The base is already, yeah. The base is already, you know, a cleaned out. There's no topsoil. Just take the sand out, put it in a base, and cast yeah. all of it. And trim the trees then. Yeah. They yeah. still need to trim those trees. Yeah. Yeah. My guess, there's no budget money right now for. It's not, but. Adding, I can find money. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think any potential for pickleball is it's 
Well, there's like you said, Dan, there's neighborhoods where they're putting in courts and yards and yes. yeah, everything sure. else. Right down here on West Ave. What is it? Looks thing? like it got washed out during. Yeah, yeah that's a hit. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's so funny you start the volleyball court. I personally have no opinion on it. Sand versus Ronda. At Onanda. Onanda, yeah. Uh, the grass would be fine, but. I think kids a have a lot of fun playing play with the sand. Like, like, you, you have to, like, do you have to. Pay for your reservation at Sonover? No. no. No, you just have to you just show up. You just show up and you just have to squat. Just wait. But, yeah, you get you work. But but there are places that are charging. So a lot of places charge. Mm -hmm. So wow. So what so anyway, we keep pickleball out there. But oh, what what again? Let's just finish up on the volleyball court, and then we got stuffing to do. Yep. But um any Dan, you went down and looked at that court at Orlando. Yeah. Uh huh. What? So, what's your? <clears throat> like I said, if you make it grass, I I can just see someday. Well, no one's using these. I'm taking these posts out, and then that's gone. Yeah. That space just becomes grass. It could be usable. I mean, if you leave it as sand, it needs some maintenance, some new sand. Um, and that's fine, probably. And or we go and put the second pickleball court. Is the septic system under that court? I don't think so. Those are mostly behind um, the game room in that huge green space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not near the. That's why it's so green. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Those leech fields. <laughs> I, I don't have an opinion on one way or the other. Is that probably the lawn kind of? Thing that you put in its place. Like they have those church balls that you throw around. On the the Gaga pits. I mean, Gaga is really big for kids. What's that? Gaga. Gaga what is Gaga ball? Gaga ball. Yeah, I'm so out of it. Gaga. My kids play it at camp all the time. Oh. <laughs> Does it need a surface? No. Doesn't have walls. You know, wood, yeah, uh, just the walls. Water, I, built, like, uh, oh, yeah, I, I built one in Red Jack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Does anybody use some spotchy courts anymore? Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Huge. yeah. Okay. Actually, yeah, we have a group that comes. Yeah. That should really be good. That's good because I told you so, so, some people. Again, anything, Lindsay, I, I, I guess really we don't have a strong opinion on. I don't either. Sand and I don't grass, think you but take it out. That's how much should, I mean, do we have, do we have any idea how much it's used? It gets it used in school gets groups for down there. School groups, summer camp. Yeah. I mean, now that we have camp down there, yeah, it provides them with activities. Yeah. I think the reason Andy had brought it up on behalf of Jeff is that it it does cause a lot of other issues because kids are putting sand down things they shouldn't be and and all Track that into the game room. And... Yeah, um, putting it down our what is it the drinking fountain and. The washrooms, and, but that's, that's it's like sanding the floors. Yeah, but it's part. Unfortunately, it's part of having the lake, a park, the lake. Yeah. My experience yeah. with having school groups there is kids use. They love it. But I don't They're think doing sand I don't think seventh graders care if it's sand or grass. I think if there's a net up, mm -hmm. okay. they'd run around and play. And, yeah, I think so too. So. I do have more of an opinion on Pierce. Like I would like to. I, I've never seen someone play volleyball. Yeah. To everyone's point, yeah. you really can't. Yeah. Um. I would like to see that park get utilized more for that community. And if it was up to me and we had money today, I would say let's go the pickleball yeah. route, trim the trees back, do all that. Because I think, yeah. right, because any age can do pickleball. Yeah. Yeah. And I think we have to start looking at that um, to provide that outdoor recreation opportunity for people. I, I, do you think that park is used a lot? I mean, it's not because I go by there on a regular basis, and I don't. So I said the same there. thing when I first started, and then I was like, "No one uses this basketball net. Like, we should take it down." Don't you know? I drive there, and there are a bunch of kids playing on it, and I'm like, okay, it's just odd times that, like, in the evenings. Yeah, but I've been there used. fifty years, and I go by there. Well, then we need to build basis. something to bring to have so, them come. On that note, I mean, I've Cheshire my whole life. 
you play basketball down there. You, yeah, I do. You say, can't make shots because the rim is. It's like if we gotta if we want to do something really nice. I we saw you play football. basketball. Nothing to do we could do a. <laughs> my friends who are very good students still have trouble. If we could do a pickle court, pickleball court slash basketball like a multi court where you well, can have nice. two basketball hoops and pickleball, kind of maybe rearrange the pavilion or the parking mm -hmm. lot, whatever it would take, but. It might bring some more kids down there. I just know that is an old rim. Oh, it is and so old. It's, and I think that's, and cars have to park in the yep, basketball court. Right? There, I mean, there's so many things that are wrong yeah. with that. I take my kids there all the time. Yeah. We play in the creek. We go on the swings. They love it down there. Wait, it's, it's, ours. It's, 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 it's ours. ours. It is a great little park. It is, it is a nice park. It does get used yeah. for Castle. I mean, Castle used yeah, to not just go there because it's a hidden... This summer, <laughs> sometimes the weekend, you see a lot of families using the mm -hmm. pavilions. You know, they have cookout family reunions or something. We play our turkey bowl there. Um, we did get service. approved in the budget to update and fix the baseball field, too. Yeah, if we could get softball back down there, a softball league in the summer. Yeah, um, I can like, remember when they had my that. My dad, put, everyone played, and I would yeah. play. But, but again, I think there's another case of the facility got so bad that right. people yeah. stopped using yeah. it. Yeah. 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 People played softball down there. Yeah. There, were, there were teams coming from Victor and Bloomfield to play at this yeah. park, right? I mean, just from my perspective. Yeah. No, there were leagues that would play on that field, but you just can't now. So. Played Newark over there. Played Newark is came down to us. So any, anything else? Anybody, any other, other, other than Music. Halloween? Um, that band oh, so yeah, we'll just have to look at in the spring, look at yeah. putting them in. And so I did, I think I mentioned I did put in the budget for three concerts if we wanted to. Oh, oh okay. I did forgot that. Um, yeah, I didn't get a chance to look up that band, you know, to okay. research them at all. They've been all around this area. Yeah. Um, yeah. They have a wide range of music, which yeah. I think is yeah. nice. Yeah. Nice option. Their price was pretty comparable to. Yeah. Everyone else, so um, anyone coming to Onanda Saturday? I'm setting up on Friday. Oh, yay! I'm gonna try to get down on Friday. Oh. I think I can come on Saturday if I can. When do you get there on Saturday? You the two to five out. is the right, but. I'm a. I'm going to be. When are you going to get there to set? Do one to fifty inches. Okay. I mean, it takes. Five Yeah, half an hour to set up, but do what help. So I'm bringing the kids down. You want to come down yeah, early and, and do it. So. Yeah. I I'm going to put up a pop up tent. I, we've got a sign that's going to come with me. Okay. So, but right. if anybody's around two to five to help hand out candy, that would be that would be helpful. But so. Awesome. Meeting so, stuff some bags. Stuff some bags. Stuff it. No, that's that's the meeting's not adjourned until the bags are done. <laughs> Do we want to officially end the meeting now? Sure. Um, we all good? Yeah. And we adjourned and move on to bag stuffing. Okay. Thanks.